Doc Lizzie here, the podcast and beast from the East with the Professor John Gotti, the King of RG, the Troll Master, the Data Analyzer Ninja, the Conqueror. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Terminator, Professor Omega, the Cleaner. Just How you doing, Boyle? I can't even I'm good, call man. it, man. There you go. There it is. The uh, I understand. Wise man beckons that everyone needs to acknowledge their tribal beast. The reigning, defending, undisputed podcasting champion, the head of the table, the Sultan of Squat, Los Chanquillo, the Pied Piper of podcasting, the sanitizer, Doc Lisna. It's been a pretty, uh, Pretty uh, quiet day yesterday, man. Not not a whole lot of news. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we heard LeBron hit a milestone, right? But I mean, that was but, that wasn't a matter of but did they win? But did they if. win though? I have no idea, actually. I know they that he cut press. Listen, listen. This is this is the news right here. This is the headline, and you just asked me if I want to talk about it. This is why I didn't. Here's the headline: LeBron ends press conference early to catch a movie. Yeah. Folks, now you wonder why we barely talk about the NBA. There was a trade that I I, I, I forgot about two days ago with Bobo. I guess he got traded yet again in a three mm-hmm. day, a three day trade. I think he went to the Celtics, and I yeah, was trying to remember. Him. I was trying to remember if they still had Taco Fall. No. Uh, uh, and I was sitting there, and I was like, "Could you imagine?" You know, Taco Fall and Bobo on the court at the same time. It's not that NBA anymore. <laughs> It's not, um, but it would have been amazing to see it. But nonetheless, we got some NFL news, boyo. Um, I saw it happen. I was obviously in Texas when it happened. I saw it live, and I kind of figured there was going to be some ramification for it. Bruce Arians slapped the crap. That might be an exaggeration. You, you I would say think- slap some sense into him. I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, I know we've seen worse. Um, Obviously, we've seen some coaches, you know, yoke up players, you know, high school and, you know, college players. But Bruce Arians slapped um, Andrew Adams safety on the helmet. Um, As you know, it's a penalty to pull guys out of the pile during a fumble. And, you know, he was trying to avoid that. I mean, I'm glad. You know what would have been bad is, uh, you know, Bruce is dealing with that Achilles issue, right? Um, so he can't be out there moving that quickly to go slap players on the helmet either. Um, but he was fined fifty thousand dollars for this striking of the helmet. Of course, this, was a, this was a PC fine. I think we could both agree to that. This was a PC yeah. fine. Yeah, I think it was. Um, Especially on the wake of the Urban Myers thing, because unfortunately, people started to immediately make the comparison with Urban Meyer. They were saying that Bruce Arians did get fired for some Ooh. stupid reason. Wow. Uh, but it, I understood it though, and you know, it wasn't. I think this is one of those things where you you see it. I'm sure it happens a lot. You know, uh, coaches hit players over the head with the the whistle and um, or the you know, the play chart, you know, stuff that's in it, you know, those innate objects that are small or light, but I don't think we usually see guys, you know, get hit over the helmet like that. Um, But (laughs) I understood it completely. (laughs) I mean, I I took that as a teachable moment. Yeah. Hey, hey, you know, because he's right. He was right. He was right, though. Yeah. Uh, But (laughs) he said he's going to appeal the fine, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, if anything else, he might, you know, take the fifty thousand dollars and donate it to a charity instead of giving it to the league, kind of thing. I think people will probably pay. Uh, uh, Andrew Adams might actually pay it for. Him. <laughs> hey, hey, it happened last year after the uh, Super Bowl. True. Not, True. not with Andrew Adams, of course, but you know what we're talking about that led to the, you know, now the uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. rule. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's also you know, stupid. Judge, uh, ju- uh, judgment, by the way. Of course. Um, but they, you know, they talked about that. And, you know, he just said he couldn't resist. He had to get him back, you know. Um, and I think they talked to the coaches about that also, saying that, you know, 
it was stupid, but you know, luckily it didn't like cost them possession of the ball or anything. Exactly. Uh, see, this would have probably you know pushed them back, and they were in good field position. So I understood popping of the helmet. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Bruce Arians striking Andrew Adams. Yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal, honestly. It, it wasn't, uh, but you know how it is. Uh, but speaking of those bucks, uh, he also addressed Tristan Wirfs um, as well as uh, some of the other players, uh, saying that a lot of people didn't practice, you know, on Wednesday. Um, hopefully, those those players get a chance to practice today. Yeah. Uh, which I think he said he's going to make the final determinations tomorrow on if those players will play. And of course, that's you know Tristan Wirfs, Josh Wells, Ronald Jones, you know Leonard Fournette, some of those guys uh, that were all kind of waiting to see if they play or not. This is going to be exciting. I think it's going to be exciting either way. Um, here's how I look at it. Is. The fact that they haven't been ruled out yet, you know, mm-hmm. leaves a lot to be hopeful for if you're a Bucks fan or if you're Doc Ellington. Oh. So just because they haven't practiced, you know, yesterday, mm-hmm. you know, doesn't mean that they're not going to play. They could still be a game time decision. Of course. And then it just, you know, hopefully the Rams will be coming in and thinking that they're just going to, you know, dominate us because we're missing some pieces and we just kind of backdoor, you know, roll up them. You know what I'm saying? Just a backdoor roll up with our feet on the ropes, of course. But sure, let's go with that, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're on, you're on down that hill by yourself on that one. <laughs> That's all right. I've been on that hill. I live on that hill, actually. I live on that hill. Um, but Johnny, we also had some off-season QB news already. Obviously, some teams are already in the off-season because they're not in the playoffs, or they had an early exit, um, including Steelers. Mike, coach, uh, head coach Mike Tomlin saying, you know, he's actually excited for the opportunity to have a QB battle uh, for the first time in pretty much years. Um, and right now, the battle lies between Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins. Um, personally, I don't like it. <laughs> I'd probably <laughs> bring in somebody else. Um, I've, we've seen both of those guys start before, and let's just say it's, it wasn't pretty. It, it's funny that you said that, because think about what happened this past off season about TV okay. battles and about expectation subversion. Mm-hmm. Because we knew who was going to start in that team. True. Mm-hmm. But it was to help the stock price for the other QB that they ended up dealing. Of course. So here's how I look at it. The Steelers have the opportunity. Mike Tom has the opportunity to finally get a quarterback that he wants. Of course. And not one that was inherited to him or one that was acquired via trade because their kid messed up that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which both of these guys have a bad rap now, by the way. Absolutely. I mean, let's not forget about Helmet Gate. Exactly. So I think this is a the ample opportunity for him to get a quarterback in the draft mm. to develop. True. A quarterback true. That, that he wants to give the reins, no pun intended, over to under center. And the thing I like about these two guys is that neither one of them have the upper leg or the upper hand. Nope. Um, They've both thrown terrible picks over the years, (laughs) equally. Um, But luckily... They both both underwhelmed, especially Dwayne Haskins. He definitely underwhelmed, based on where he was drafted. Based off the hype he had leaving college. That's true. And we just talked about that uh, when we were talking about Joe Burrow and how technically Dwayne Haskins was over Joe Burrow at Ohio State, which is why Joe left to go to LSU. Um, But when you look at him. a pretty good move for him. Dang good move. And don't get me wrong. I mean, he did play for the Washington at the time Redskins. And they are still trying to figure things out. 
Um, don't get me granted. Taylor Heineke is making the best of his opportunity. Okay. I was about to say because <clears throat> we have Taylor Heineke out there doing some things with doing some things, not not super great things, but good enough to get it was it was better than it was bucks. before. I mean, you know, we always talk about you know sometimes it takes a pretty good quarterback to help turn the franchise around, but you also yeah. have to have the will to be able to do so. I mean, I mean, we're going to get to that question if, you know, he's the guy or not, but um, I'm I'm looking forward to this also. I mean, obviously this is going to mean that for all the fantasy lovers out there, you go out and you, you definitely draft Najee Harris um, <laughs> because they're going to hand that dang ball off probably four to 500 times this year without question. Or dump um, it off to him too. I, and that's, uh, you know, the, and the issue is like they need offensive help outside that because basically we're going to have a you know cmc situation true um because you also have to make a decision on if you want to you know keep juju smith schuster also i don't um, think so i think you should yeah, let him go yeah because i mean even though he came back on a discount which was perfect for them not so good for him because now he's lowered his market because he got hurt and then his stats just don't show anything worth big money. And then you have, you know, the likes of Chris Godwin out there and a couple of people who and I was just you know, about to make that mention too. Yeah, who are gonna demand some um some high money. So I mean if I'm Juju, I'm just like, mm, I might take a, yet another discount. Um at this point it's no longer a discount, Doc. <laughs> it's not. He's just getting double checked. Did I just say? Did I say that? That's what you did there. That was pretty clever. That's my bad. My bad, State Farm. That's my. That's my bad. That's my bad. This is not mad, folks. <laughs> Definitely not. Bless you. Um, but I mean, just looking at some of the other wide receivers, just to name two, I already mentioned Chris Godwin, but you also have Allen Robertson and Devontae Adams, uh, yep. just to name some other receivers that are going to be free agents that he's going to have to deal with. So um, it, it's going to be tough for him. I'm interested to see what happens um but we'll have to wait and see we're still in the playoffs so we won't go too deep into that um but we did want to talk briefly just about some of the quarterbacks who are slated to stay who could be on the move, and I guess who would be, I mean, we would be shocked if these people move. Of course. Uh, uh, we'll go over just a few of them here. Um, obviously, the situation in Miami, you know, I think the whole reason that Flores was fired was because he just didn't believe in Tua. Um, and that's just one of the reasons, but I think that is the big reason. Um, you know, I don't think... <sighs> I think Flores wanted Deshaun Watson, and the reports still come out that he wants Deshaun Watson. So wherever he goes, he wants to bring Deshaun Watson with him. But it doesn't seem like he just – he just doesn't seem like he wants to just go to the Texans, Mm. which would be the – which would be the easier route, in my opinion. Um, But – The issue is I don't think we actually heard from Brian Flores about – what's going on so i'm taking those reports with a huge pinch of salt yeah the fine because it could just be a, a matter of them trying to justify firing him because we keep saying that why would you fire him like he's doing amazing and you know throwing in this deshaun watson trade you know hoopla is probably their way of trying to you know cya themselves well i don't think it was him i think it was um one of the analysts, um, I think we talked about it last week, you know, saying that Brian Flores said he didn't want to, uh, he didn't want to, uh, you know, he really wanted Mac Jones, so on and so forth. And we talked about him trying to maybe motivate Tua instead Mm -hmm. of, you know, those kind of things. But I think the whole idea was to tank for Tua. That was the whole campaign uh, that the media was portraying. It was so well known, it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just so happened that Jacksonville screwed themselves. Was it Jacksonville yeah. or was it the Jets? I 
think it was Jacksonville. Jacksonville screwed themselves. Yeah. Um, but that's to a uh, next, of course, we have Russell Wilson, who's going to, you know, soar his Royal Oats in the, in the pool there. Yikes. Um, see if he can, you know, I don't know. I don't know where he would want to go. Um, somebody's going to get screwed somewhere in here because when you really think about it, there aren't too many starting spots where Russell could go in without taking it away from a young guy. Um, I can agree with that. You know, um, <clears throat> there could be a situation, and this has just popped in my mind, where you can go to he can go to a team like Indianapolis, who's unsure about you know Carson Wentz. They're not unsure; they want him going. Let's not <laughs> let's let's call the spade a spade, Doc. They do not want him anymore. I mean, listen, we just said that until they come out and say that they don't want him. You know, they, they've been saying they were unsure. They weren't going to make the announcement right now. Nobody said no. Nobody no said one no. said no, but the fact that they said that they're not, it's not guaranteed that they'll move forward with Carson. <laughs> and, and that's not a speculation, folks. That came straight from the front office. Right. <laughs> um, and, and, of course, you know, on this list, it also mentions Jalen Hurts, which obviously – Pete Carroll could swap in for what he could believe to be the future Russell Wilson. Yeah, he has a lot of potential. I mean, we we know that as we was watching him play in college, especially. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with Pete Carroll. I don't know if he's definitely going to stay, and if he stays, you know, like you was mentioning, they might want to get hurt. He might want to get hurt because he mm-hmm. can see, you know, Wilson two point right there, but. I don't know. I mean, I would feel bad if he, you know, end up having to leave, mm-hmm. you know, especially since they did all they could to get him and, you know, getting rid of the aforementioned Carson Wentz. Mm-hmm. But no, I mean, I'm... I think, I don't think the issue was really with him. I don't think so either. Um, that that team has a lot of holes. So do the Seahawks. I mean, I don't think swapping quarterbacks is going to fill their holes. I didn't um, think them uh, firing their defensive coordinator was going to help. <laughs> I think they're I think they're going in a completely different direction defensively. Um, I don't know what that direction is, of course, but obviously they lost a lot of players. I didn't think they should have signed Jamal Adams back to an extension, but. Um, I you're guess that's you're, you're still be... staying on that hill too, Doc. <laughs> I told you, I live on that hill. I live on that hill. But uh, that defense is going to have to come together. And the other thing here, and this is a good one here, Daniel Jones. Yeah, but before you go into it, so this is a mm-hmm. shout out to Doc's cousin. You know, Doc, like I met your cousin, you know, we shook hands once or twice. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. he gave Daniel Jones way too much heat this year, especially at the start of it. Yeah, I think they were saying, you know, I think a lot of his things was that he just turned the ball over a lot. He was a turnover machine. He fumbled so much. He did this. He did but that. But he didn't even do that until like mid season. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, <laughs> you know, I, number one, the good thing about Daniel Jones is that, you know, he's still a low cap, $8.4 million. Obviously, still on his rookie deal. Of course. Um, of course, this little snippet here says he'd love to see him play under a different leadership. Um, it, it, and I told, I that, told that goes without saying because of how the yeah. Giants franchise is, but they also just got finished getting rid of both their coach and their GM. Right. Uh, which, I mean, sp- spells doom for him because, you know, unless a coach that really believes in him comes in, um, it's not going to be good for Daniel Jones, which which he showed a lot of promise. I mean, remember the long run, obviously, before he tripped and fell. Mm-hmm. Um, he had the long run, so he had some wheels. He honestly looks like he could literally be not the full package of Josh Allen, but but pretty close. Pretty like he, close. He, he has some he has some Josh Allen in him. Just a little as bit. As far not as skills arm. wise. I, I mean, yeah, not the arm, of course. <laughs> His decision making is still questionable, but I don't also don't like the Giants play calling and uh, Saquon Barkley also not being healthy. And, you know, I looked at their 
their well, salary Saquon cap. Saquon Barkley not being healthy, him losing pretty much most of his uh, receivers. Yeah, Kenny Galladay going down. I actually took a screenshot and sent it to my cousin the other day um, just to give you a quick, you know, rundown of their high-priced items uh, on their cap here, just to give you a few names, and you let me know. Um, we got James Bradbury making $21 million. Leonard Williams making $27 million. Blake Martinez making $14 million. Adoree Jackson, $15 million. Sterling Shepard making $12 million. Kenny Galladay got $21 million. And Logan Ryan is getting $12 million. Not high value names anymore. Nope. Although Bradbury is still really, really good. He's still good. Uh, I would say maybe the only person. I could, I could I see was... Bradbury heading to Tampa. Not for that price. No, 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 no. Nah, nah, he, he's willing price. to take a pay cut, though. Yeah, because, I mean, I already know, like, if things don't go right, you know, we can't sign Carlton Davis back. You know, nope. we, we would have to let some of those guys go. Um, but. Not to get too far away from here, do got maybe one or two other guys to go over. Um, I mean, somebody who, you know, got a lot of guaranteed money, Kirk Cousins, 33. Yeah, unfortunately, he, could, he may be out of there. <laughs> he could, but he could easily go to a team and make them a contender. He can go to of Indianapolis. Course. You know, he could go to, you know, the Giants or, you know, he can go somewhere and, and be really, really good and, and get them – potentially over the smaller humps, mm -hmm. right? He can go to Carolina and do better than Sam Donald, right? Um, he can go to some of these teams. So I'm interested to see what they do uh, with Kirk Cousins. Um, and I think lastly here, I'd want to talk about from this particular section is Baker Mayfield. Um, obviously, a lot think, has gone on. I think people... <laughs> just didn't like Baker Mayfield heading into the league. Mm -hmm. And that has corroded into the situation we have right now. Yeah. Because this year he played, I mean, we talk about, you know, players having to play injured, you know, pretty much most of the year anyway. But like he mm -hmm. played really injured. Like he, did. like he really tried to help Willis team to wins and, you know, for some reason, the play calling kept making him throw the ball way too many times than he needs to. Because, I don't think he's going anywhere. Yeah, I, th I think he's done very well over the years. Um, of course, some questionable play calling. I will agree. I think Stefanski could be out rather than Baker being out. It, that, thank you. Yeah, um, because, I mean, it, we can talk about questionable, highly questionable play calling, questionable decisions. Um but you a team again, job. yeah. Again, though, a run game could support a Kirk Cousins, a Russell Wilson, a Carson Wentz. Uh, you the, know, the, these these guys that can come in and lead this team. Um, only thing about it is, I don't. I just don't think they use the weapons that they had. Like coming they in, don't. like the Browns. Remember when the when they were comparing the Browns to the Chiefs? Yes. Oh my God! Oh my God! I can't wait to play with the Browns and Madden. They got OBJ. They got James Landry. Ooh. They got Chubb. They, they, they got Baker. Oh my God! Them boys got Miles Garrett. Oh goodness! They going to the Super Bowl. I <laughs> don't know about all that. I Yo, feel like oh you are God. trying to prepare two drastically no. different franchises no, right no. there. Them, them dogs. We went from a national. They don't. They, they don't so sit there. Down. They don't go. They don't sit there and literally every single year saying that we're going to the Super Bowl. No, it wasn't every year. It was just that year. One that year out year. of like what? How many? <laughs> it, was very, it was very loud. Very loud. They going to the Super Bowl, but they fizzled out. Um, and I guess the only person that's not on this list here, and we'll end it with this, is Tom Brady. Really? I mean, could this? Uh, no. I mean, Tom uh, can hang it up. Are you trolling us right now, Doc? No, I'm not. You know, win or lose. I mean, Tom said, hey, I want to play to 45. He's 44 and some change now. You know, I think he might hang it up. And if Tom hangs it up, I mean, the quarterback market is wide open. I mean, all I all I want to see happen, and we'll end it on this, mm -hmm. is when Tom Brady decides to hang it up, 
his successor being Aaron Rodgers. That's that all I want to so see. Amazing. Oh, because, God, that'd be so amazing. Because I am literally going to call the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the Death Star at that point. Yeah, that would be amazing. Oh, God. I would just like And lose Aaron Rodgers brings Devontae Davis. Oh, Devontae Adams. Adams, sorry. Devontae Adams. No, no, you're fine. That would be nuts. That'd be too much. But you know what, Johnny? Devontae Adams. Mike, <laughs> Mike Evans. Evans. <laughs> Chris Godwin. <laughs> freaking Gronk. Well, Gronk might retire also. I think yeah, Gronk he might retire. Tom are gonna, I think Gronk and Tom are going to go out at the same time. Yeah. But Johnny. Like, it was fun. We got ourselves a ring. Two rings, hopefully. Deuces. <laughs> yeah, two rings, hopefully. But Johnny, I know that people heard this podcast on their favorite podcast platform, but if they didn't, they can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com to review this episode as well as all the previous. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we go over our predictions. <laughs> as well as give you the news, the analysis, and the reads.